Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, we're going to be working with uh, Excel and uh, SQL again. But more specifically, I've got these questions uh, in the past on, okay, so I've got all this data in Excel, but I need to put this into a more permanent data storage solution. What do you suggest in that case? So I mean, the obvious solution would be, you know, things like an actual persistent database like SQL, for example, because it's also hard to mine some of this data in Excel by using just filters and stuff. So last week I did a video about how do you take an Excel spreadsheet and put it in memory into your computer, do some SQL statements against it, and then export that out as another Excel sheet. Well, this week what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Excel sheet, we're gonna put it in a permanent data storage solution. I'm gonna use SQLite 3 because it's just easy to use with Python, but the process is fairly straightforward and very similar to what you would do with SQL as well. So we're gonna put this in an SQLite uh, database. Then we're going to do some querying against it, and then we'll uh, do some transformations to show how it works. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to query directly from an SQL database and render it in a pandas data frame with like one or two lines of code. So let's get started. So what I've got here is I've got a data set from Kaggle, and this is a product sales data set that I just picked. It's a random data set. Uh, nothing very special about this. What I want to do is I want to take this data set and I want to import this data set with an SQL Lite. So what we're going to do is we're going to just close this down and we're going to work in Jupyter Notebooks again. And so to get this kick started, you know, we obviously need a few libraries. We're going to need pandas. So import pandas as PD. We're going to need, let me just put this all on the same line. We're going to need SQLite 3. And that's pretty much it. If we do need something else, I'll uh, bring it in. But I think this is the... We should be able to get away with this. So first things first, let's go ahead and import our data set. So we're going to say data frame is equal to pd.read underscore Excel. And the file itself is called sales.xlsx. And it's in the same directory that I've opened this in. So I shouldn't have a problem if we just want to take a quick look at it. Let's just DF it. So this is it. It's the same data set that we were looking at before. And so we're going to try putting this into an SQLite 3 database. So next thing I need to do is I need to set up the actual data database itself. So I need to open a connection and that's really going to initialize the connection to the SQLite database. So we're going to do SQLite3.connect and I'm going to call it salesdb. So now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the connection. So first and foremost, I'm going to say C is equal to, I'm just going to abbreviate this because I don't want to keep writing con all the time. C is equal to con.cursor. And so the next thing we're just going to do is we're going to execute our SQL statement. So I'm going to say c.execute. And then we're going to go ahead and say create table if not exists. And that just means if the table doesn't exist, let's create it. Otherwise, leave what we have in there. And we're going to say sales. And we're going to pass in some values here. So let's do some string formatting here. And then we're going to say dot format. And I'll explain what's happening here in just a second. It'll make sense. And I think I need to close this off with more. Let's just make sure. Oh, I did get an error somewhere. So let's see where this error is. Ah, that bracket shouldn't exist there. So let's try that again. All right. Nope. We got another error. And that needs to be a capital S. Let's try again. All right. So it looks like it's gone ahead and created the database. So let's go take a look at it. And you'll see it's called sales.db. And to really use an SQLite uh, database, you can download an ac application called DB Browser. Uh, I believe it's free. At least I don't recall ever paying for it. So there's our sales database over here. Now we don't have any data in here at this point. All we've got is we've just got the actual column names. So let me go back and explain what I've done here. So let's go back and open Jupyter Notebooks. What I've done here is I've said, take my DF column names in this case. And I want to just create a big sentence out of it. Otherwise, it's going to pass a list and it's not going to work. So what I want to do is I just want to create one big massive string. And I want to have something like order number, comma, space, quantity ordered, comma, space, price each, and so forth. This way, it's just passing through a string into here. And it creates a database very easily that way. OK, so now we know that we've got a data frame. And this has multiple rows. So let's just see how big this data frame is df.shape. So it's 2,823 lines by 25 columns. 
So that's a pretty big database. So let's see how we're gonna go ahead and put this in here. Well, we need to write some kind of a loop statement. So we're gonna say for row in df dot iter rows. And if you remember from my beginner's Python tutorial, that iter rows is a good way to go ahead and iterate through all of the different rows within a data frame. So then we're gonna write our SQL statement. We're gonna say SQL is equal to, and I just like writing this in caps, you don't have to. Uh, this is just my way of kind of doing it into and then I'll make this small so this is going to be the sales data we're going to pass in a variable there and then we'll say values and again we're going to pass another variable there and then we're going to say format and so this is where it may get a little messy but I'll tell you what, what's happening here so I'm going to bring this down here again because we're going to need this as my column names as I come down this and we'll put that here and that's going to be basically I'm saying insert into my table sales data columns, which are these, and then the values. And so in SQL, what you can do is, instead of putting in the values here, you can go ahead and do something like, if I have, say, five rows, I can do question mark, comma, question mark, comma, question mark, five times. And this is just a placeholder for each one of those columns so that when I do my next statement, it's going to dump them into those specific question marks. So I have 25 different columns. I don't want to do this 25 times, and there's got to be an easier way, and thankfully there is. So let me show you how to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to write dot join. We're going to make a list of question marks, and we're going to multiply that list of question marks by the length of the DF columns. All right, let's see if that worked. And of course, there's going to be some kind of an error somewhere. Where did I mess up? Of course, I forgot to add in what I'm joining to. So we're going to do this. Actually, we probably don't want a space in between because I just want straight question marks. So if I do that, that should work. Um, if you're curious to see what this would print here, let me just show you what this would print so that you would know. So if I just bring this down here, it's going to print this. So it's going to print 25 question marks, which is why I decided to do it this way. So you can import pretty much any data set you want and it'll automatically adapt to the number of columns you have. All right, so just a few more lines of code and then we will be going ahead and putting this data into that database, which we're gonna check. So c.execute and we're gonna say SQL because that's a statement that I've made. It's the SQL statement. And I'm gonna be putting in a tuple for row. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select index number one because if I were to just print row on its own, you're gonna get the keys and you're gonna get the values. All I want is the values, so which is why I'm going one over here. And then finally, you wanna commit your changes, so you're gonna say connection or con.commit and close your brackets. It's good that we're going through these errors together because this is typical of what happens in reality. You're gonna go through these kind of issues and you need to, you need to figure out how you're gonna go ahead and troubleshoot it. And it says no such table sales data, and that is because I should have actually created this is sales data. So let's go ahead into here and delete it. Just because I don't want to get uh, things confused between the database name and the table name. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to recreate it. So I'm going to say move to trash. All right, so let's go ahead and recreate this. And now if we go into that file, we're going to have the database name is sales. When I go and browse it, it's going to be called sales data. And look at this, I have a whole bunch of data. I have 2,823 rows, which I believe is what this was. If I just do a quick df.shape 2823. So that's really how you bring all this information into an SQL environment. So now really I can connect this database itself to a whole bunch of different things. I can connect it to applications. I can connect it to another, diff another SQL tool like Workbench, for example, and do some querying against that. I can start using this for data to dump into a different environment, whether it be a staging environment for analytics or, or whatever it is, but you've literally created a database now. So now let me show you, if I wanted to do a simple transformation, like I wanted to go ahead and delete something. So let's go ahead and look at this database and say, how do we delete something from here? So if I were to pick, let's pick deal size and let's delete anything that's small out of this. So remember we have 2,823 rows. So, you know, how do you go about doing that? Well, it's actually a lot easier now because you've already imported all your data. So we're gonna do c.execute, and now I can just write the command right in here. So I'll say delete from sales data where deal size is equal to small. So if I execute this, oh, and I have to com commit the connection as well. So I have to go con.commit. All right, now if I go ahead and look at my database now, 
and I hit refresh, I'm down to 1541 and all of my smalls are gone. I'm just left with medium and large, which is cool. So you can really could start now controlling and manipulating an entire database just off of two lines of code in this case. You would do this. You would do something similar if you're going to do update. Except when you're updating, you'd be bringing in new data just like this. Um, so this is really how you would control it. So then the last thing I want to show you is, all right. Well, now that I've made these changes, how do I go back and view this as a data frame? And really, to do that, it's one line of code. So I can say df1 because I want to create a new data frame is equal to pd dot read underscore sql underscore query, and all this means is open a data frame and query this SQL data source. And when you do that, make sure you bring it back as a data frame. So select star from sales data. And then the I want to pull this. I'm using my connection, my con, which is up here, to connect to this database. All right, so if I were to go ahead and do this, and I would just write DUF1 here so that it prints out the results, what you'll see here now, let's do a shape against this actually first before we start you'll see 1541, which in fact matches what we have in this database here. So if I wanted to go ahead and take a look at this, what you'll notice is there's no small in here whatsoever. So you could really just use this one line to query. I mean, you obviously need to open your connection first up here, but once you've done that, querying the database is so easy. You could just do it with one line of code here. And so this is slightly different than what I showed you last time, but last time I wanted to bring the database in memory, which is a little bit different. Um, here I'm actually creating a persistent database, which is sales.db. So I'm querying the actual database that's sitting on my hard drive, which is right here. All right, and when you're done all of that, you just wanna to go to the bottom and you wanna close your connection. So you wanna do con.close and that's it, you're done. And so guys, that's kind of my intro to using two of what I would say the fastest growing languages which is SQL and Python, obviously, uh, connecting them together, combining them together to show you how you can actually start doing some really cool analytics, some data science, and all that other fun stuff against us. So if you found this helpful, please help the channel. Click like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.